so the process I've been using is essentially uh, an AI backed or a, a com combination of different AI backed colorization techniques. Um, they've been floating around for years in, in various forms, but the last couple of years there have been a few that take reference material very seriously. They essentially work by object recognition. So once a computer has seen a face a thousand times, it has a vague idea how a face looks and the colors of that and the lighting elements of it. Um, you also add to that by throwing it reference frames, extra material, um, set photographs. The lovely thing about it is it's very versatile. It can take both hand-colored reference photographs or color-recovered reference photographs or on-set photographs and use them as source material to do the, the, the colorization work. So unlike a lot of the techniques, it's actually quite heavily founded in, in what color material survives as, as best we can. we can. We can use a lot of the original sources. Well, the, the other process that's used, color recovery, is an absolutely ingenious piece of work, but it works on recovering a pre-existing signal. So essentially, um, a good number of telerecordings, it's somewhat disputed, when I say telegram, I mean filmed, filmed prints of colour programmes, um, have the traces of the colour, what's called the subcarrier, which was the means of broadcast. They essentially broadcast a black and white image with a colour signal over the top of it. And when it went to a black and white set, you'd quite often see this signal undecoded. Uh, and if a film print is meets certain criteria, A, having that signal still intact, B being of a, a clarity and focus enough to recover it, and C not having too much damage or too many other problems, you can often recolor, recover that signal, um, which gives you back an idea of the original colors of the program. The issue is that it's limited to prints that specifically are suited to that technique. If the prints don't have that information, you can't pull the signal from them. And it's also becoming increasingly apparent that the amount of colour that you can recover with that process is very much dependent on the quality of the film print recovered um, and on all sorts of different elements uh, that, that factor in, whether it's in focus, whether you've got a good enough scan of the print, whether it's clean enough to, to, to not distort against the, against the, the reader. Um, th th there's an, a, a number of problems. And, of course, it does only work with film prints. Uh, and as time goes on, we recover more and more black and white copies of colour material from things like domestic recordings, um, alternate formats, um, open reel tape, for example. We, we, there's, there's an excerpt of one of the, the Steptoe smoke and reel tape that we have, we, we, we've recently been working on. Um, and those would not work with that colour recovery process. And it is, it is something of a compromise because we, we have to use the best available evidence to produce the colour version that we produce. So it's not entirely a recovered signal. It's, it, it's a signal based on best evidence. So it's, it's, it's something that works brilliantly alongside colour recovered material. It works brilliantly alongside all the other techniques, particularly to fill gaps in series and shows that otherwise would end up being constricted by the material. Ready? Here's the corpse's hair, passed around, and here's the corpse's hand, pass it on, and here's the corpse's eyes. Now then, Ronnie, I'm giving you all the time that I'm going to understand. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm hoping that this will draw some attention towards how accessible the, pro the, the, the process is. I'd love to be able to work on more material and access some of the sort of material. I'd love to do something like Year of the Sex Olympics, for example, that people have specifically said for years needed to be seen in colour. It was one of those flagship colour programmes. And also, as you say, elements like the, the Goodies is another great example of a show where most of the material is rebroadcastable, but you have two or three that aren't of a quality that can presently be shown. Uh, that's another ideal one for um, for working on. I also spoke more controversially to someone recently about re-showing archive material for shows such as ITV material, where 
you had shows that were affected by colour strikes. Whole series where they only have a single episode that originally had to be printed down in black and white um, when it was made in colour and now can only be seen as a black and white source. So there's all, there's all sorts of sort of applications of it, but I'm happy to, I'm happy to work on anything and everything. I'm, I'm going to over gurgle. <laughs> over what? Gurgle. Well, I've heard of all the places on the south coast, but I've never heard of Oba Gurgle. <laughs> it's in Austria. Oh, what do you want to go to Austria for? What's wrong with Bogner? Yeah, the, one of the best examples we've got of this sort of process working and, and when it can be at its best is when we've got access to primary sources. And that's particularly evident in the case of the Colony Pop episode that I worked on, which is the, the Hollies episode, which is one of the earliest surviving. I think it's the second earliest surviving episode of the series. And the advantage there was not only did we have several sort of primary sources of material, but we also had access to the producer, Steve Turner, who was able to, to oversee the process and put his memories into it and bits from the production diaries um, to really get that process together. And it also brings forward how much of a, a time constraint we're on to work on this material. Color recovery will work you know, in, into the future, but things like this where we're dependent on people's memories of a show and it, the production material, we're going to struggle to do in 10 years because that those people aren't going to be there to talk to and, to and to get that information from. We also got extremely lucky that one of the other engineers actually retained a soundtrack of the programme. So we've even been able to pull a high quality magnetic soundtrack that matches what would have been on the original videotape. So as a whole programme, it's all resourced, all restored and all, and, and all pulled back from the, the best quality we've got. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a fascinating process because you're essentially teaching a computer with, with the information. So you, um, have, if you imagine it can recognise an object, if you hand it a person, people's faces tend to be fairly standard. Colours, hair is, is one of two or three colours. A T-shirt could be any one of 50 colours and have the same grayscale representation. So you do have to feed it information. And there have been points where particular shots and particular have just the computers just not understood them. It's just not been able to have the source to, to pull it together. And that can take hours and hours. You can you can spend four hours in a three second clip and have another program that runs through in ten minutes. Um, it, it's very much dependent on that. I mean, the, the whole process started um, with a show called Time Slip. Uh, Many years ago, I was involved in a, a small convention that went on to to um, celebrate, I think it was the 40th anniversary of the show at that point, or just after. Um, and just having an enthusiasm, I hand-coloured about three or four minutes of the, the missing material. Um, and just got to thinking there must be a, a, a better way of doing it. And we tried all sorts of things like motion estimation and different elements of that, which have been used in the past for things like some of the Doctor Who manual restorations have used motion tracking and things to, to help colorization. But they're always they're always hit and miss, and they're always still very labor intensive. Um, so when I got a chance to have six months off to fiddle around with the different processes that had come to be put together, and the different the different sort of things that were now available. It all it all came together as a it all came together as a process, and quite quickly I realised I could get whole scenes of material done in a very short space of time, comparatively. Tomorrow night, as usual, late night lineup presents Colour Me Pop. It features Selena Jones, and she sings for us now. This is all I ask. life. 